Hi everybody, Jeremy Blum here with another Tech Bits video. This week I'll be talking about how to pick out compatible parts when you're building a new computer. This is a question I get a lot. Uh, people tend to have a hard time picking out what parts would be compatible with what, uh, what plugs into the correct thing, making sure you have the right amount of power, etc. And um, that makes sense because it's very difficult to make sure that everything's going to mesh well together when you pick out your parts. So this is just going to be a very brief guide uh, for how you should maybe approach this selection process and what you should look at first, etc. The first thing I would suggest looking at is your case. You're gonna, what size case you have is going to determine how many hard drives you can fit, how many optical drives, uh, what size your motherboard is going to be, etc. So you're going to want to pick a case that is the right size for wherever you're putting it, uh, anything like that. Make sure it has the right number of front panel connectors that you want. So start with that because that will determine what you can fit inside your computer. And you can always change that later based on whatever requirements you decide to change. Next thing I was just doing is picking a CPU. You're basically between AMD or Intel. Keeping in mind that AMD and Intel CPUs are compatible with different motherboards. They can't use the same motherboard. So which one you pick is going to influence the rest of your computer. Uh, generally, you're going to want to make sure you pick out a desktop CPU. Uh, don't accidentally pick a mobile CPU for a laptop, for example, or a server CPU, unless you're using a server motherboard, but that's generally pretty rare. Um, so just make sure you pick the right type of CPU first. Uh, then move on to picking the model, the actual model that you want. So different CPU models have different frequencies, cache sizes, bus speeds, pin configurations, etc. And so different models uh, are going to have different socket types. So for example, the Intel Core 2 series is LGA775, and uh, the AMD Phenoms are socket AM2. It's AM2+, plus, sorry. So you're going to need to get a motherboard that supports that socket type, and specifically that CPU. So once you've chosen your CPU based on what kind of speed you think you're going to need, how many cores you're going to need, etc., uh, you should move on to picking out a motherboard. First of all, you want to look at a motherboard that's going to be the correct form factor for your case, keeping in mind that many cases will support different size form factor motherboards. So uh, a large case will often support uh, extended ATX, ATX, and mini ATX. So just get something that will fit in your case. Uh, figure out what port you're going to need, etc., and then um, make sure you do one with either Intel or AMD support, because like I said before, they use different types of motherboards. Um, next, you want to make sure it has the right pin configuration, the right socket type. So if you're using, let's say, a Core i7 CPU, which is LGA1366, then you're going to want to get a motherboard that supports that type of CPU. Uh, it should generally say in the specifications what uh, series of CPUs it supports. Next, you're going to uh, want to look at the chipset for the CPU and the chipset for the motherboard, sorry, and make sure it does everything that you need. Uh, so, for example, uh, NVIDIA and, and uh, Intel both make motherboard chipsets. Uh, however, these are manufactured by different companies like EVGA, uh, Asus, etc. Asus, et so you're just going to want to pick one that uh, has the features you want. And if you're planning on doing a multi-video card configuration, you have to make sure it supports either SLI or Crossfire, depending on what you want to do. Uh, for your video cards. So now you have your motherboard and you're going to move on to picking out your uh, RAM. So start by choosing either DDR2 or DDR3. Those are the most common types now, although I'm sure there will be other ones in the future. Uh, but for now, that's basically what you're going to want. Uh, so just choose whichever one your motherboard supports and then you need to pick out the speed for your RAM. Uh, the motherboards are usually rated for a maximum speed RAM. You generally want to go for the maximum, but not necessarily. Uh, and then pick out the capacity that you want. So if you want 4 gigabytes of RAM, you should get 4 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, keeping in mind, however, that most motherboards support dual-channel RAM now, so what you'll probably want to do is get two 2 gigabyte sticks. That'll generally come in a package, and then you'll be able to take advantage of a dual-channel uh, RAM, which speeds it up a little bit. So now, once you have your RAM picked out, you're going to want to we want to a video card. You have to choose basically between an NVIDIA or an ATI chipset uh, video card. Uh, ATI is owned by AMD now. Uh, all modern video cards and motherboards are PCI Express Time 16. Uh, now there's PCI Express Time 16 2.0, um, but so just make sure that matches. And if you ever plan to do a multi-video card configuration, as I said before, make sure that the chipset you're using, the motherboard you're using, has support for the kind of uh, configuration you want. So if you want to do SLI with two uh, GTX 280s, let's say, and NVIDIA cards, then you're going to want to make sure that your motherboard supports uh, SLI. And then the same thing with Crossfire. Uh, 
Next, move on to your hard drives. Uh, you're probably going to want SATA 2. That's the most common type right now. Just make sure that you have enough SATA connections on your motherboard for the number of hard drives you want and enough room in your case to cool them adequately and, and to keep them in there. Same thing with the optical drives, uh, either IDE or SATA. Make sure your motherboard has the right number of connections for how many you're going to use uh, and that you have enough room in your case, of course. And then next, you move on to cooling. So first, there's the cooler for the CPU. If you're not using the stock cooler, the one that came with the CPU, uh, and you're using an aftermarket cooler instead, you have to make sure it's the right socket type. It'll usually say it's in the specifications. So if you're using a Core 2 uh, CPU, you want to sh make sure you get a cooling fan that supports an LGA 775 socket, because that's uh, a certain connection, uh, and how it's going to mount on the CPU. And for the case fans, uh, just make sure you're getting the right size that your case supports. Your case might already include fans, which means you don't need any. Uh, and then you can either get 3-pin or 4-pin fans. The 3-pin ones are the ones that plug into the motherboard, so just make sure your motherboard has enough connections for fan headers. And uh, the 4-pin ones are Molex. Uh, they plug right into the power supply and they daisy chain together. And then next you're going to want to look at a power supply. So now that you, know, you have all the parts, you know what your power requirements are going to be approximately. Uh, you can use something like a wattage calculator on, on Newegg.com or you can ask on uh, my website, ultimatecomputers.net, if you need help figuring out how much wattage you're going to need. Um, a good estimation for a gaming computer now is anywhere from 600 watts to 1,200 watts, depending on how powerful the computer is. Uh, my computer, as an example, uh, the video's Ultimate Computer 5, is uh, 800 watts. So you're going to want to make sure that the power supply is the correct form factor for the case. Uh, and you generally want to make sure the wattage is a little bit higher than you need to make room for future upgrades. And you're going to need the right connections for your motherboard, which will be 20 or 24 pin, plus an 8 or 4 pin for the auxiliary power. Uh, your video card, which will be a combination of 6 and 8 pin uh, connections, depending on how much power it draws. Your hard drives, which will be Molex or SATA. Uh, same thing with the optical drives. And if you're using fans that plug into the power supply, those are usually those are Molex as well. Uh, the ones that plug into the motherboard don't require direct power from the power supply. And then accessories, lights, fan controls, etc., those things usually require Molex power. So just make sure you have the right number of connections, cables are long enough, etc. And then last thing, you need to pick an operating system. So if you're using more than 4 gigabytes of RAM, just make sure that you're getting a 64-bit operating system uh, to be able to, to address that much memory. Otherwise, you won't be able to see all of it. And that's, that's basically as, as far as the OS limitations go. So that's it. Uh, basically, just keep in mind that hardware configurations, form factors, uh, connections, etc., they're always changing. So just keep abreast of uh, what's new and what's going on so you can make sure you're getting the newest stuff and that everything works together. And if you have any questions, head over to ultimatecomputers.net, and uh, we can certainly help you out picking out parts, figuring out power supply requirements, etc. Uh, so that's it for this week. Thank you for watching TechBits. I'm Jeremy Blum, and I will see you next week.